pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In conformance with the Open Public Meeting Law, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this regular meeting through notice posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, mailed to all who have requested and paid for same, and published on suburban trends. Roll call, please. Mayor Stone. Here. Council President Wright. Here. Councilman Bay. Here. Councilman Barranco. Here. Councilman Delon. Here. Councilman Jacquinet. Here. Councilman Bennett. Here. With us this evening is our borough attorney, Joseph Ragno, and our borough administrator, Kevin Brown. Liz, we have no presentations, right? I'm sorry. No, there's no presentation. No presentations. Right. Okay. We have the business Right. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, before we do the business improvement district budget, just a quick update. We just had our yearly OEM uh, meeting here. It was well attended. I'd like to see that. It was also be on Channel 77, which is good for the residents to see. There was a lot of good information given out there. A lot of uh, our department spoke from our CERT team, which is made up of all volunteers, over 50 people now on that CERT team, that come out and help the public when we need it, down to our river and, and flood work from our, our, our boards there, and of course our OEM director, Al, for uh, getting us straight on where we're going forward with that. I, I think everyone, I think the message I get out of it every year is everyone should be prepared for what happens when a storm comes. The responsibility has to be on on the citizens and also on the town together. It's a shared, shared responsibility. So if we know a snowstorm is coming, probably best to get prepared for that. At the same time, as I mentioned in the meeting before, you know, with we're pretty good at storms and, and emergencies here in town. We've been doing them a long time. We have some people that are very good at what they do. Um, and I, and my, I put full trust in how they're going to run those programs and do them, and they do a great job in doing that. Running to Facebook at the first time snowflake falls or the first time it rains to see if the rivers are flooding is probably not the best thing to do. It's just going to get misinformation and miscommunication. Um, probably best to wait till an official word comes out. Either if you're signed up for our reverse 911 calls, if you're not, you can sign up through our webpage right here, or you can come in and sign up right here at the police department. I would hope that every household has at least one contact to the emergency preparedness telephone number or website to get that information. That's where you're going to get the real information. Secondly, uh, just to go follow up on the uh, record, a story that was written about DuPont. You know, I was very unhappy with how that story was written. I was very unhappy with the reporter who wrote it. He, he seemed to have a vendetta against Pompton Lakes and didn't really take the true facts of what's going on here in town and, you know, mixed information with things that happened five or ten years ago to present. Uh, I stopped talking to the reporters, to the record. I've actually stopped uh, receiving the record. I know other people have approached me about not receiving the record, and that's their opinion. They can do that. I know this reporter now has called me in the last week wa wanting to write a positive story on the lake cleanup that DuPont is doing. All of a sudden, he wants to write a positive story. I don't know what happened uh, the first couple weeks that he was writing a five-page negative story for five days in a row. But again, I told him no comment. If he, if he wants to write a story, I'd like him to at least be fair on how he writes the story. I'm not telling anybody they can't write a story about something, but at least get your facts in check and facts straight before you write the story. So that's where I am with the record. So if you see no comment from myself, I can't speak for the council. That's why it's no comment. I don't like how they treat the town when it comes to writing stories. Okay. Uh, business improvement district budget. Is anybody going to present that? Or uh, I'm going to be the best Okay. There's no one from the bid here, though. That's right. Okay. Resolution 1888, resolution authorizing adoption of a budget in the amount of $607,859.85 for the Special Improvement District in the Borough of Compton Lakes for the year 2018. Motion to introduce the bid budget in the amount of $607,859.85 for the year 2018. Councilman Begg. Second. Uh, Council President Riker. Roll call, please. Councilman Barranco. Yes. Councilman Delon. Yes. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Brennan. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Okay, this will be adopted on Wednesday, April 25th. Okay. Good. Good. 
I think it's appropriate just to explain that. Well, we can't. It's actually. No, you can. But it's somewhat, if you're not familiar with how this kind of bed budget works, it's somewhat Basically, the $600,000 is money that is generated through the property owners, commercial property owners in town. They are funding their own business improvement district. The borough is just a conduit in terms of giving the money back to them to spend for their own purposes. This is not a reflection of anything that the residents see on their on their residential tax bill. And I think that needs to be said. That is a good point. This tax is a tax that's put on the owners of the businesses in town. It has nothing to do with residents in the town. The residents are not taxed for this. But they do make a lot of improvements with the money that they are taxed in town with. Our streetscape that was done about 10 or 12 years ago was mostly paid for by the bid and some grant money from the federal government. So that money that you see there is collected and used for downtown and making it look better and anything they need. They have their own budget and they have their own committee that decides how it's spent. Yeah. And that current budget also represents surplus from the previous years that are appointed to certain projects that they have planned for the future. So some of that money is for the new year and some of it's from previous years that are set for projects that they're going to do. OK. Can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comment? So move, Mayor. Councilman Branca. Second. Councilman Bennett. All in favor? Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Please state your name and try to keep it to five minutes, please. Hello, Mayor Stahler. Hi, how are you? You know me. I do. Ted Montagna, co-chair of Bowler Museum. I'd like to introduce to you Councilman Robert Meyer, our liaison to the museum. I'd like to introduce Vicki Pine, a volunteer at the museum. I would also like to introduce Alan Bird, our curator. I have given you a brochure in January at the historical preservation meeting. I would like to hand these out to the other council. Sure, if you just give them to our clerk and she'll hand them out to you. We're in full support of you wanting to have a museum. And we would like to publicly invite you to come to our museum. Our mayor, Bob Alvin, will also like to be there and meet you as well. And any ins or outs that we can help you with, suggestions, so forth and so on, we want to show you how we did it. And hopefully you will learn from what we had done and what we have gone through. Now, we also have issues with volunteers. I would strongly suggest being open two weekends a month. The Quantic does it, Lincoln Park does it. You could do it two Saturdays, the second and fourth Saturday of the month, say from 10 to 2. So you don't have a lot of people tied up to man the museum. You're going to need a building. You're going to need display cases, so forth and so on. Vicki here did all of our, or I should say a majority of our labeling. So when visitors come to your museum, they can either take a self-guided tour or the members of the commission can take them through. And then if they have any questions, you know, they ask the members. Uh, I would like our curator, uh, Alan Bird, to come up and uh, give you some insight on our displays and our artifacts. Sure. Hello, my name is Alan Bird. I'm the curator of Butler Museum. For I just need an address to this one. Okay. Uh, 43 Raff Road, Bloomingdale, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I've been with the Butler Museum now, uh, even though I'm a resident of the borough of Bloomingdale, but I've been active with the museum for 30 years now. And it's a quite local institution, you know. It's the home group, home body. I'm involved with multiple historical societies from the county level up to state level. But knowing institutions of a local value museum in your community it is a learning experience for all, but having incorporated a museum committee, commission, or whatever body you might have, just having a home of a museum, each municipality, each area, each county is managed like through the borough of Butler, through the auspice of the governing body, which is very supportive to us. Each museum is on their own. Some actually have to go out and earn every little penny they have. Some do have budgets. Some have great trust funds, but the historical significance of having a local institution 
involving your senior residents as well as your young residents. And your young blood is really, that's your community, because you're the ones who want to educate. They forget fast. The older ones pass on, you got the younger ones coming through the door. So it's like a revolving door. So there's always new blood, old blood going through. But as establishing an historical society, committee, commission, a home base is always what you want. Now, some local communities or like an historical residence, you know, they have house furnishings. Some have just local chamber of Congress. They have anything from somebody owning a business to their local industry, all kinds of museums. And if you go throughout the area, if you look, besides on websites, even within our own county as being a Bloomingdale resident, and within the Passaic County itself. There is funding, there is grants, everybody fights for grants today. But the whole thing is in establishing a home. Once you have a home base, it just grows from there. But I know it's very hard, we're in trying times, uh, you have different mountains to climb, you have just like any other organization of belonging to an American Legion, a BFW, belonging to whatever. You all have growing pains, but the whole thing is, once you establish a home, you'll be, you'll, you'll see it. It just grows in time. But the thing is, it just having established what you want. Once you create a master plan for an historical group, and just go from there. Now, finding the home is always the hard part, wherever it might be. But for you yourselves, I would strongly suggest coming up with some form of general master plan and build from there. Hopefully you'll find a home, yes. You look at real estate, real estate's not cheap in the state of New Jersey. You're dealing sometimes from $100,000 to a million dollars. Now, is your historical society going to be something like this size, or is it going to be a broom closet, or is it going to be like an historical building or a train station? So I recommend whoever you're within the community or group, establish a home someplace, and you watch it grow leaps and bounds. Historical items disappear in dumpsters. They, we, like ourselves, we the Park Museum. We have, we've moved into the 21st century. Now we're into the digital world. We do have display cabinets. We, under our restoration, from foundation down, from going up to this roof, we went through major renovation. We were closed for four years. But we were lucky, we had a Hallmark store that was closing, and guess what we needed? And through our last renovation, I restored cabinets, but this time, we needed new cabinets. So, through your local businesses, your local schools, through your church, your community outreach communities, you really want to do is set up a base or a ground. No matter what goes on within your community, but you want to build, okay, what are our goals? What do you want to do? What do you want to display? Do we have a home to display? I know it's tough at times. I've worked with it in the borough of Bloomingdale. In Bloomingdale, we don't have a museum ourselves, but we're working on into that as in progress is working. So we're taking baby steps and going from there. But through the borough of Butler, if you, any of you have not been through a local museum lately, please come over and visit us. We're open most Saturdays between 10 and 2. So we have I, one or two faces that look familiar who have stuck by our institution. But our outreach and going into the 21st century, we have a digital access now. Our, all of our yearbooks, Butler was known, even Pompey Lakes residents went to Butler at one point. Morris County, Cassate County, even parts of Bergen County, they came from Midland Park. All of our local technology now is there, but it, you have to start it as a seed. Yes, you need to buy that computer, you need your funding for scanning, but if it's done in time and orchestrated, you'll see it grow. What we had to do is myself and a group, and including my own mother, 12,000 pages of a newspapers we had. The Butler Argus, the Bloomingdale Argus, the Paquonic Valley Argus. It takes time, it will take a few years. Maybe you, once you plant the seed, you gotta watch it grow. So maybe it doesn't, some people want instantaneous results, but the bottom line is, once you start it, it just grows from there. So well, you're doing it for the future. I, I, well, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. I mean, I think you guys have a great museum over there. I haven't been there yet, but I, I definitely, maybe we'll do a little field trip all together as a group. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Um, I, I will tell you this. I think what, I, uh, what I'm taking out of it is two things. We, ha like Butler, Poplin Lakes has a long history, a lot of history. Yeah, thank back you for there. your attention. No problem. Um, 
but it's for us, it is going to be baby steps. Uh, we're going to take it step at a time. Um, I'm glad the historical committee is looking into it and trying to push this forward. I think it's a thing we need. Of course, you mentioned a lot of the problems, the building, cost, things like that we'd have to work on. But we'll get past those things. You know, we've always had a, a history here at some, some level, just not in a museum form. You know, we have the setup outside now. That's where we've been keeping a lot of artifacts. Uh, one of our, our residents for many, many years was keeping all the artifacts at her home. Uh, she no longer can do that, so we've taken a lot of that on ourselves. Uh, we will definitely reach out to, you, to your group and, and to, maybe to the councilman himself uh, and, and see if we can get some help in moving forward. But for us, it's going to be baby steps right now. Uh, so the more information you can give to the historical committee, the better it is. And I, you know, I talk to those people, and I know Mr. Councilman Dennett sits on that, and he brings that to us. Uh, and maybe we, we'll set up a date that we can all meet on a Saturday, and we'll take a little tour out there. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You have my contact information. Yeah. So yes, <laughs> and and you, it's in the pamphlets too that you'll be giving out, right? Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else from the public like to address? Kevin McQuallis, 828 Lincoln Avenue. I understand we have a new DPW supervisor in town. We do. I'm happy that we have a new DPW supervisor in town. I would hope that we see some dramatic changes in the DPW. I would hope that the man's been given some projects to accomplish over the course of the year. For example, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but that piece of land between the Bond Hall parking lot and the high school, it looks like a dump. That's your dump. You own that. Okay, I would like to see that cleaned up. You have a beautiful high school. Um, it's just in, in general, I would like to see, I expect to see some dramatic changes in the DPW over the course of the next year. The majority of them are hardworking guys. They do a good job. I, I admit that, and they're great guys, but there need to be some major changes. I would hope to see those changes take place. And like I said, one of them, it's just it's irritating to look at that, that staircase going up at the beautiful high school, and there's all that, that crap just laying there. So thank you. So just to address that a little bit, uh, you know, I, I took it as a very serious position that we had to fill when it was in there. And I usually don't sit in on interviews, but I did sit in on this on an interview for this person. So, and I agree with you, we needed change there, and we needed some direction, and we needed some uh, ability uh, for the men to do what they have to do. And for the most part, they do what they have to do. But you're bringing up examples of things that maybe haven't been done in the past. Uh, so hopefully, give him some time. He's just got his feet wet. He just started. But Kevin, can we just remind Dan uh, uh, about that area? That is our area. You're correct. That is our area that we should uh, police and at least keep it clean if we can. Um, I know that the flood board will be meeting with him. He'll be coming to a meeting at 7.30 at night to meet with the flood board to see what their uh, requirements are and what their needs are. So he's willing to work with our groups in town, which would be something new for us for the last 20 years. Um, so at the end of the day, we'll see where that goes. But if you have any suggestions, please reach out to our administrator, reach out to me, and I can pass them on to him. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to address? Seeing no one. Motion to close the public session. Yo, you want to talk? Go ahead. Yeah. Step up. Martha Kirita, 913 Poplar Street, Council Lakes. I would like to thank you for helping me with the raccoons issue at one point. I need to ask, one of my neighbors got paid from Zupan, and I leave in the pending area. I have a daughter who was born with three dismal formations, cardiologists, ophthalmologists. She's only six. And I was in the class action too. At some point I couldn't keep going because I got sick. But I haven't gotten anything from them and I think it's unfair that All right, so let me just stop you right I hate to interrupt you, but the uh, anything that comes with a lawsuit that's independent has nothing to do with the town. We, we, we are not part of that lawsuit. We're not with it or against it. It's all done by the residents themselves individually. So if you have a concern or a question, you're going to have to go directly to DuPont and ask them what the concern or questions are. We have no knowledge of lawsuits up here, and we don't deal with the lawsuits at all in any shape or form. So if you have any questions about what, what was done or wasn't done, you're going to have to talk to DuPont themselves. Okay. okay. Thank you so Thanks. much. Anyone else on the public want to address? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close the public session? So moved. Councilman DeWine. Second. Councilman Jackanetta. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Approval of minutes. Motion to approve the following minutes. Regular meeting minutes of March 14th, 2018. So moved. Councilman DeWine. That's it. Second. Councilman Branco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? 
bills and claims. Motion to approve the following bills as listed below. Do you have a motion? Motion. Councilman Begg? Second. Councilman Dwine? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Petitions, we have none. Consent agenda whenever you're ready. Is there anyone who checked the resolution? Anything full? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Compton Lakes have reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions, whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Compton Lakes does not desire to move resolutions for individual, individual action from that agenda. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. Resolution 18-86 through 18-92. Can I have a motion? So moved. Council President Riker. Second. Councilman Jackanetta, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Uh, separate action, we have none. Oh, first reading, none. Second reading, none. Oh, we do have yes, one for second yes, reading. Thank you. Ordinance for second reading, ordinance 18 09, and ordinance ex to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank according to state statute. <coughs> Kevin, then. This ordinance we do every year. Uh, this ordinance allows us to um, ex expend the cap bank um, and allows us to exceed the municipal cap. Right now, the cap is 2%. This ordinance allows us to go to 3.5%. Our budget, as introduced, is below both caps of 2%. So, this gives us the opportunity to grow the bank on force. So if we ever had an economic issue, it becomes, it becomes a financial tool. So, at this point in time, it's in order to do every year, it, 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 you do not exceed the caps. It gives the opportunity to build up and look in the budget. It explains how the cap numbers are and where this would benefit us down the road if we had an economic condition. So <coughs> that's what it does for us. Okay. Can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comment on just this ordinance? So 1809. So moved. Councilman DeWine? Second, Mayor. Councilman Branco? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Anyone from the public like to address just this ordinance? Step up. Uh, hi, uh, Peter Schizma, 314 with Lord Avenue. Uh, just a question, actually. Was that to say that you are going to increase the budget, or was this just the no. right to reserve, reserve no. the right to? Right, right now, our budget is, is, is below both the appropriations cap and, and, and the, other, the other caps that put in place of 2%. We're below that. Right. This allows us, this financial allows us to, technically, do the math on the budget, because you're at 3.5%. Gap instead of a 2% gap. And against the financial tool, it doesn't affect the budget, doesn't affect the tax rate, it allows you to be able to add so many thousands of dollars, what it might be, as, as a cushion going forward. But, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a mathematical computation. It doesn't impact the fact that we are below our, our caps. It's just a way of financially trying to give you some cushion down the road. So what we're, what we're saying in another way is we're, we're below our cap, we know that, but in case something was to happen and we had to change that, we could. But we know where our cap is now. We're not. We're not so you're changing. reserving the right. To you're reserving the right. You, okay. you, want, you want to call it that? That's correct. Yes. Okay. You want to see it that way. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for the public? Motion to close the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 18-09. So moved. Councilman Devine, Councilman Beggs, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Motion to approve Ordinance 18-09 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman Devine. Second. Council President Riker. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Barranco. Yes. Councilman Delon. Yes. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilman Durant. Yes. Councilman Bain. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Bain. Yes. Councilman Bain. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, under my report, uh, first I have a motion. Motion to approve the appointment of Kelly Halowitz as a member of the Board of Health, unexpired term to 12-31-19. Can I have a, I made a motion? Can I have a second? Second. Motion. Uh, uh, Councilman Delon, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay, under my report, uh, let's start with the snowstorm. You know, we got caught off guard. Not off guard, we knew it was coming, but it was a late snowstorm. And, you know, as someone mentioned before, we have a new DPW supervisor. He had just started about two months ago. Uh, you know, he doesn't know exactly how we've done snowstorms in the past, but I thought he did a good job, and I thought the guys did a great job. As it was mentioned in the, in the uh, earlier meeting, we have a staff of about, is it 18 at DPW? 18 total. Those are the same guys that pick up your garbage, they plow your snow, they pick up your recycling, they take care of our parks, they take care of our grass areas. They do a lot of the work that we have to do. So when we have a snowstorm, obviously the thing they have to do at that moment is the snow. 
That means your garbage might get pushed back a day. That means recycling might get pushed back a day. That means sticks might not or twigs might not be picked up. We have to understand that we're a small, small community. We're trying to keep our tax base, which we just talked about our budget, stable. You know, we could hire another 10 guys, but does everybody, including myself, want to pay for that through our taxes? Probably not. So we have to give our guys a DPW a break. You know, we had an, uh, an incident down in our DPW garage with an angry resident. Uh, I, I just don't like to see that. These guys are working hard, sometimes through the night, and then coming in after a couple hours sleep and coming and picking up garbage where they could just say, look, we can't do the garbage today, but they'll go out there, you know. We, we, we just have to give these guys a break. They're doing a lot of the work a lot of the time. Uh, so I thought they did a good job. Of course, if there's a concern or a problem and you're not going to call that second and say, hey, look, they didn't do this or they didn't do that, you give a call over to the office or you can even call my cell phone. I'll talk to you about it. If it's something that we can work on, the DPW can fix, we'll definitely go out there and look. A gentleman came up today and said, you know, one of the areas that we own looks a little messy. That's something we can work on. But at the end of the day, our DPW, I, I feel, does a great job. Today, and they deserve the respect. You know, and like I mentioned before about Facebook, it's easy for people to attack on Facebook without being there. Um, you know, and throwing comments about our DPW on Facebook just isn't right. So uh, it, it sometimes gets me upset to see that. Uh, we also had our change of officers day where the kids come in from the high school and take over our positions here as mayor and council. Uh, this year they came in, they did a great job. They were all great speakers. They all came up with resolutions and ideas of what they'd like to see changes. Uh, some of them are very good ideas that one of the reasons we, I enjoy doing this is because you get to see you get to see out of the box a little bit about how people are thinking and feeling. These are kids 17, 18 years old. They kind of see things a different way sometimes when they come up with ideas or things to be done. And some of the time, most of the time, these ideas are pretty good ideas looking into the future about how things should be done. So I always give them credit for coming up here. It's not easy to come up here and talk in front of people. They spent the day with our clerk in the, in the office doing a lot of the work, and I thank the office staff for entertaining and getting them the information. Um, but, but at the end of the day, the mayor and uh, his representatives did a great job in CTO, and I'm sure we'll, all of us will follow up with that. Our, I have a memo from the DPW, actually, that there was a typo on our calendar and that we will, during the meeting of the typo, what was the actual typo, though? The paper and the cycle were switched. So First, yeah. paper, the first week. First is paper. So we're just going to keep that. Opposite. Right. So on our calendar, there was a little mix up with recycling and paper, and, so, and somebody noticed that and reported it in. We're just going to keep our same schedule. It's going to go uh, recycling paper, recycling paper, uh, even though the calendar might say no, that. No, no, no. Other way? So that's why I need a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and just so everyone knows, I did put an alert on the front page of the website, and the schedule is on there, the dates. Yeah. All right. So Which month are you talking about? April. April. Okay. April. So just clarify right. that it's April that's backwards. Coming up. Eight words backwards. Check our calendar on, on the web page for, for the most updated information. Yes. Is that correct? That's what we're talking Alert. about. Alert. Alert, yes. While we're talking about our web page, and uh, Councilman DeWine mm -hmm. and Councilman uh, Bennett can speak about it, you know, we have our new monitoring system here that works very well for all our meetings, but it also can aid us. Does anybody have it up? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just show them uh, how, again, how we can sign up for a non-emergency, uh, for emergency sign up and not emergency sign up. Emergency sign ups are over here on the left. Sign up for emergency notification. That's what you're going to sign up for to get a phone call or a text or an email when the town is issuing some type of uh, urgent message. That's on the left hand side. That's on the left hand side, and you would go through the process there. And in the middle here is the non emergency notify me. So, uh, calendars, events, and whatnot. So, on that second button that they're talking about, that's where you can go up to sign up. If you want to get uh, times of when there's certain meetings or when our council meetings are or any of that information, I get it on my calendar. It'll it'll uh, show you all the calendar dates on your calendar if you set up through their, their system. It's a nice little setup there. So thank you guys for that work. It was a lot of hard work. But I think the more and more people get with our interactive uh, website, the better off you're going to be because there's a lot of great information there. You can look at tax maps. You can look at flood maps. Uh, it, I think it's an unused resource right now that a lot of residents are just starting to get their fingers into and see a little bit about it. 
I know with these past emergencies that we've had in the last couple, some residents did call and say, I didn't get a notification. You do have to sign up for the re-notifications. Again, even if you were signed up five years ago or ten years ago, the system has changed, and you have to uh, re-sign that up. If you're not computer literate and you can't uh, do it online or you don't know how to do it, you can come right here to our uh, records department here, right outside the window here, and they'll do it manually by paper and sign you up. But I think anyone who was interested, and let me say this also, you can sign up for a parent or a relative that you have who lives in Pompton Lakes. If you're not in Pompton Lakes, it will notify you in Florida that this emergency is going on in Pompton Lakes and maybe to check on a relative you have. So I think it's an important thing, and I think everybody should take the time to try to sign up for that. Um, Jay, the non-computer uh, forms, there's just going to be extra right here on the table. Right, and they have to bring them to the, they can't, yeah, you have to bring them still into the office to, to do that. And I think that's what I have right now. That's my report. Council President Record. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I first want to um, commend the uh, program, the 630 to 730 Emergency Preparedness <coughs> Program. Within the one hour, you had Lauren Vennon, Jimmy Rose, and Al Evangelist that really go through a tremendous amount of material. Um, some things may be familiar to you, some may not, uh, but it has been recorded and it uh, is a potentially um, very valuable resource. Um, my little ditty, just to, just to add, is um, mm -hmm. I was one of the households that kept losing power during these series of snowstorms. And one of the little um, hints that we found very helpful was we took those camping headlights that you, uh, the miners' headlights. <laughs> so if you, if you are in one of the areas that are prone and you don't, own one or two when you by using them you have two free hands as opposed to carrying around a flashlight or a lantern and uh, unfortunately that was very that was invaluable to us so um, I thank my daughter for leaving her camping equipment <laughs> when she moved out so um, that's my my hint that Al didn't mention in his in his program uh, in terms of CTO day that's the change in officers day um, very well attended by the council. Uh, in addition to everything that the mayor mentioned, uh, we had the opportunity to, uh, to go to lunch with the students to sort of see them in their natural habitat before they put on their their, their jackets and ties and and uh, acted like uh, the mayor and council. And uh, the thing that struck me is that they, besides having a broad um, uh, uh, resolutions and the depth of their resolutions is how well they how well they thought on their feet. Um, they really were able to to answer the questions that were posed to them in addition to speaking on their resolutions. And from a personal point of view, um, the students really seem to understand the value of redevelopment and really seem to embrace it and seem to be a, a very significant resource for us in terms of getting uh, the word out in terms of what redevelopment can do for our community. And we were sort of kidding with them that, that uh, if redevelopment uh, does take the form that we hope, by the time these folks are out of college, they're the ones who are going to want to come back and rent those, rent those apartments that will uh, hope, hopefully be there. Um, Many of you are familiar with uh, are familiar with what's going on. The mayor alluded to that the, 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 the um, late cleanup is is back in action. In that the uh, sevens and equipment you can see is uh, is on the lake. Uh, they put in a very full day when I left here uh, left my home around 6:20. They were still out there working. It's not uncommon for them to work from seven to seven, uh, trying to put the echo layer down. The only thing I want to bring to people's attention is that we've had the um, barriers in one place for quite some time. The, as the eco layer um, moves, as the equipment needs to move, that barrier line is going to change sometime in the spring or, or, or early summer. And so especially the voters out there we need to make you aware that you that you need to pay attention to the to the turbidity curtain and and if the, the the lights are flashing that that 
path will, in fact, change. So what you're used to seeing will, in fact, change as they begin to move the equipment into different locations to get the eco layer down. Um, many of us up here attended the uh, Easter egg hunt. Uh, they were really very lucky this year in that um, we didn't have rain, we didn't have snow, we, we had seasonably cold weather, um, and I think we had a very large turnout, according to uh, the rec folks. So, uh, and I know Facebook's been taking it on the tin tonight, but there were a lot of fun pictures <laughs> with people in the bunny rabbit, hugging the bunny rabbit and chasing the candy, which is, a, from my perspective, a very appropriate use of, um, uh, of things. And I will add that I think we get more, we've probably had over 500 kids this year, and probably because of Facebook. Facebook, the word gets around on Facebook and they come, where in the older, older times there was a piece of paper stuck on a refrigerator somewhere that maybe people forgot. So we, we did have a lot of, a lot of kids there. Um, a couple of other quick things. Um, not so much for our Easter egg hunt crowd and our bunny rabbit crowd, but there are a few things that are available to our older students in town that I think this is the appropriate time to, to mention. Um, we have a very active camp and a rec program, and the applications for those people who, those students who want to be counselors are available and the deadline is the middle of April. So people who are thinking about this as a possible summer job, um, I just want them to be aware that the, the deadline is, is approaching. And the other thing for our older students, some of our college students, uh, over the years, and, and I was chatting with the administrator about this, uh, we have um, on occasion had a, a college intern or two in the office. Uh, we don't, we're not in a position to offer money, but depending upon the college and depending upon your major, this person can get credit for a certain number of hours worked and that the, that the intern is doing some meaningful work and not just bringing everyone coffee. And so I want our college age students to realize that if it's, if they're, depending upon their major, if it's something that they're interested in, they should reach out to us as, and obviously this school is the one that dictates what they can and can't do, but some of the local universities are very receptive to it. Um, this year is uh, a little unusual in that Easter and Passover fall on the exact same weekend, so I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday, um, and I hope that you enjoy your friends and family and you don't know, eat too much, and um, I need a closed session for personnel. Okay, thank you. Um, before we get to the next report, I, there is one thing I forgot to mention. Um, you know, through the snowstorm, the DPW has been very busy in picking up their uh, the, the, uh, trees and branches that have come down. Uh, what, what they're asking the residents to do is a couple things. Uh, this is probably the last week that they'll just drive around picking up uh, material. After that, they will come maybe once or twice in the month, the next month, to put it out, put it out in front of your house. But it has to be neatly stacked in front of your house. It can't just be full branches thrown at the front of your house because they don't have the opportunity to cut it up right there. We don't have, we don't own a chipper, so uh, if you, you if it's large branches, you do have to at least cut them down a little bit uh, so they can get them into the trucks. They've been out there almost daily picking up piles as they've been put out there. But they still, with the spring weather coming out, they're going to have a lot more. They're not going to have as much time to do that. So we'll be dealing with that on the uh, next couple days and then a couple days in April and then we will be done with that. You can always bring it to the recycling center at any time uh, to drop off branches if you have to. Speaking of that also, the storm, one of the uh, branches did take down our Veterans Park over by uh, Lakeside Bridge, took down a sign. I was aware of it, but again, the DPW were very busy, so they hadn't had a chance to get over there. But this is the kind of town we have. We had a resident who didn't call me, didn't say anything. He came, his name is Joe. August, he owns a business, a Weldcraft. He went and took the sign, built a brand new sign, put a new planet, and put it in himself down at, at Veterans Park. Never t called us, never said, look, I'm doing this. Just took it upon himself to do this. What's his name, man? His name is Joe August. I mean, I want to thank him personally. I mean, the I, only reason I know is because someone told me. It wasn't like it was known throughout the world. So this is the kind of residents we have in town. They saw a problem, they went and fixed it, and I, and I thank him for that. Uh, council, who's next? Councilman Boyne. No, Councilman Boyne. Big. No, oh, well, I'm way over. Big. <laughs> well, we'll get one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank Alan and uh, Warren and 
from her uh, presentation tonight. And I was kind of pleased to see that we had a pretty good turnout for a change for, for the uh, OEM program. And, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank Karen uh, Murphy and her uh, team of volunteers for the, the Easter egg hunt. It was a very good turnout. And uh, I think everybody really enjoyed that. They did. Uh, I attended the Thompson Lakes Board of Education meeting on March 13th. Uh, it was recommended that the Thompson Lakes High School students uh, who participated in the program in support of Parkland, they had a, a program at the high school supporting the Parkland students. And that was in cooperation with the school system itself. Uh, there was also a report on the future business leaders of America, state competition results. Probably this uh, school did very well in the competition. It placed as follows. First place, part, excuse me. <coughs> First place partnership with business pro with a business project. First place American Enterprise Project. First place public service announcements. First place open event program video. First place website design. Second place impromptu speaking. Third place agribusiness. Third place community service project. Third place introduction to public speaking. Fifth place computer pro problem solving. And fifth place scrapbook. Uh, that club does a very good job at representing the high school. And, uh, it's a fantastic training ground, really, for our uh, future leaders. I attended the Pompton Lakes Community Partnership uh, bid meeting on March 15th. President John Suge spoke about the work needed to be done in the Pompton parking lot, which includes drainage and realigning the uh, striping to increase parking. They are also looking to for a planning meeting, which would involve the borough, the state county, and the engineers, and the bid and would be contributing to the funds. There was also a discussion on the flower planters to be placed in the downtown business district. There was also a discussion on several marketing, uh, marketing programs, which, said, uh, which uh, was sent back to the committee for discussion. Helen Zobaki uh, made a presentation for the Library Foundation. She made a report on the uh, Coordinate the, the uh, holiday uh, house tours with the holiday strolls of the bid. And she also spoke about the Library Foundation's One Book, One Town program. I attended the uh, Ponto Lakes Prevention Coalition meeting on March 22nd. Members of the coalition were, uh, will be distributing ID checking guides for 2018, their booklets to the local bars and the liquor stores. The uh, HAWC club at Hunter Lakes High School, school will be participating in the sticker shop campaign in, on April 28th. They will be visiting the liquor stores in town and placing stickers on bulk liquor packaging, promoting not providing alcohol to minors. They are looking for the mayor and council to make a proclamation uh, for the sticker <coughs> in order to uh, draw more attention towards the project. Victor uh, Lodato gave, Victoria Lodato gave a presentation titled Current Drug Trends. One of the shocking facts that I found uh, in the presentation was that every four minutes, every day, of the year that someone dies of a drug overdose. And that's a serious problem. And that problem, it's not just a New Jersey problem, not just a local problem, it's a problem in the United States. And that's kind of fair. And I'll go back to what you brought up about the Hawks. For people who don't know who the Hawks program is, that's the uh, arm of the Drug and Alcohol Alliance that's high school students, made up of uh, Lake, uh, Lakeside, or middle school and high school students. And for them to take on a project where they go into liquor stores with the guidance of our police and the alliance coordinator and put on big stickers on, on all the packages of uh, alcohol, especially the beer, saying you sell to minors, you go to jail, so in simple terms like that. Take a lot of courage for a 10th grader or 11th grader to kind of do that. 
you know, he, he's, they're trying to set their own stage on what they're doing there. And, and this group, I, I give them a lot of credit. They're in the high school every day doing what they have to do and trying to fight for the right to uh, not have to go to a party and drink till they pass out. So, um, you know, there, there's a, a group of about 20 to 30 kids right now that are made up these, the Hawk program, which what they call it, which is the Alliance program. So I give them a lot of credit. Uh, one of the other things I mentioned while you mentioned the school, I was fortunate enough to be asked to be a judge of the high school, uh, kind of like Mousetrap, if anybody remembers the game Mousetrap, they have to have a 15-step process where they turn a box of cereal over and it pours into a bowl. And it was teams made up of uh, schools from all over the area. And one of the teams that was there was actually the national champs that went to Chicago and won the national championship. Um, we put our first teams in. We had two teams from Poplar Lakes there. First time we've done it. I got to say, the kids came up with some great ideas to make this cereal pour into a box. One of the teams even involved, and it was the Poplar Lakes team, involved the cereal with milk pouring into the bowl also. So uh, I give them a lot of credit. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of thinking. And I, and I think those are the kind of projects that the kids really get excited to do. They spent a lot of time. It was about presentation. It was about how it worked. It had, had 15 actual motions to make it happen. So it was interesting, and I thank them for doing it. It was, it was nice to uh, go over and do, do that. Councilman Breaker. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'll start my report by making a motion uh, to approve a request for the Lakeside Middle School to close a portion of Lakeside Avenue, which is Lakeside Avenue from Van Avenue to Mandeville Street, for the eighth grade award ceremony scheduled for Monday, June 18th of this year, Rain date will be the following day, Tuesday, June 19th, from 6.15 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and to make Van Avenue between Lakeside Avenue and Lenox Avenue a one-way street from 6 to 8.30 p.m. and we will notify police, fire, and first aid. It's a pleasure. The motion was made. Have a second. Second. Councilman Bennett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, uh, in the last meeting, uh, I made it a point to uh, be sure that I expressed my interest that Veterans Memorial Park be put back into its original state. Uh, the DPW did a great job with that, and I just found out this gentleman's name, Joe Angus, or however it's Jackson spelled, I'm not sure. Uh, that's a tremendous uh, thing to happen for someone to just take uh, his own time and, and do something uh, like that for our veterans and I commend him and DPW for a great job. Uh, I attended the MUA meeting on March 20th. Uh, we will have uh, hydrant flushing starting on April 16th so uh, beware of that. That will that will start happening. Um, MUA was very receptive uh, and grateful for being recognized by us. I made sure to recognize them and thank them for joining the DPW on the large snowstorm cleanup. They, they augmented the DPW's efforts and uh, they did a great job of that. Uh, they also presented their 2018-2019 budget for adoption. Um, I would like to apologize to the library board uh, for my absence as their council liaison. I've had some, some personal issues that have interfered with the scheduling and I thank my uh, my colleague, Councilman Venon, for keeping uh, a, a good line of communication between the council and the library board. With that said, library board, the library does have a uh, an informative seminar that's coming up on April 18th. We should probably tell all our friends that came here to do Change the Officers Day because it's a seminar on writing a college essay. Um, my children use uh, our local library at least once a week. They go to St. Mary's School, all three of them. Sometimes, at least once a week, go there to do their homework and wait for us to pick them up. Uh, and uh, it's a great, a great library. I've enjoyed it many times, and my family uses it very frequently. Um, and happy Easter, happy Easter, and happy Passover to everyone. And that's all I have, man. Thank you. Going back to the MUA, uh, I did reach out to uh, the director there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Becker, and to thank him for the uh, help the MUA did reach out. You know, they did give us help with plowing, and we needed it during that storm, so it was important. And also going back to the MUA, let's remind everybody again, we're going to have flushing of the hydrants. When you have flushing of the hydrants, your water gets air in it. When you get air in it, it turns a little white. I don't need to see 500 emails and, and Facebook posts that my water doesn't look right. Uh, they're flushing the hydrants right now. Give it some time to go through, and it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, Councilman Devine. 
Thank you, Brandon. Um, first of all, I'd like to begin you know, by reiterating what everybody said about the OEM uh, preparedness seminar. Um, it got delayed a week a little bit because of the weather, but um, you know, I'm glad to see as many people came, came out as they are. Um, as you mentioned, it's going to be on the website. It'll be on our YouTube channel and Channel 77 uh, probably in the next week or so. Um, you know, this is this is you know what the what you know what they what they do. They prepare for this stuff. It's it's good that, um, to get the information out there. You know, it never really gets old. I never knew about the the, the plowing the one lane kind of thing because it was you know one of those things was like okay well, now I get it you know well, <laughs> it's like so okay. maybe I'll get one less call this <laughs> yeah maybe, well, well, I'll find something else don't worry um, no but I mean again you know it, it's one of those things I mean we have a very dedicated group of volunteers um, that you know they prepare for these things they know what they're doing um, from the fire department um, sir every everybody gets involved um, Speaking of which, um, you know, one of those is the Flood Advisory Board. Uh, you know, Lauren, Lauren Bennon and all the volunteers on the Flood Advisory Board um, and their, their associate committees are, are very active and involved. Um, I didn't attend their, their last meeting. I want to thank Frank for, for going in my stead. Um, they were singing your praise afterwards, so that's good. Um, I, I did attend the, the Lennox uh, Parent Teacher Association Tricky Tray event. Um, it was um, a great event. A lot of people, um, you know, they do a lot of great things for the community, a lot of great things for the school. So um, I had to unfortunately skip the flood advisory board to uh, support wh where my, my daughter goes to school in any case. Um, did also attend the Easter egg hunt uh, this past Sunday. Again, it was a little cooler weather. I think it's always been sort of back and forth every year on it, but the uh, the kids really cleaned up. Um, <laughs> they did a really good job. I think Frank came home with a little bit uh, as well, but um, you know, <laughs> the soccer club I think is involved. So it's, it's a lot of great volunteers. I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's an, just another great event that the that the. Uh, Recreation Commission does really hard to make great for, for our community and, and it shows. Um, I did not attend the CTO day on Monday. I had to work at night. Um, fortunately, again, the, the video is actually already up on our website, so if you want to see it, you can do that. I was able to watch it. Uh, one of the, the things I thought was particularly interesting was their discussion on the uh, desire to reopen in the entrance to the Cannonball Trail um, and, and things um, associated with that. We actually have a, used to have a really good connection to a larger trail, regional trail system that uh, currently goes through the Camores property um, and for liability reasons um, and various other things. It's been closed off for now. I think you can actually pick up a new trail entrance in Oakland. Um, however, down the road, it would be great to see that reestablished. But again, that's sort of a long-term thing. Um, the last thing I wanted to to bring up was, um, in addition to you know the Easter egg hunt and and other things, um, there's actually some information on the about upcoming recreation events on the far wall, different uh, things that you can sign up for for kids of all ages, um, regardless of if you're uh, my age, uh, an older adult, or an actual kid. Um, so, you know, the recreation events just aren't Easter egg hunts and things for kids. It's, you know, it's really to engage the entire community and get everybody active. And that concludes my report. So I just wanted to comment on one thing you said. The Zonta Club didn't help greatly for the recreation. The Zonta Club is a uh, group in the high school, again, that sends to community events to just help us in any way we need. It could be cleaning. It could be they put out the candy for us. For, for them. They're, they're a great group of kids, and it's always different kids every year, but they really come out in force and really do a good job. So I want to thank them. And, and also what you mentioned about the recreation, <coughs> now's the time to start thinking. I think Council President Riker brought it up, too. The thing about summer camp, it's very difficult for the recreation department to try to put together numbers of counselors and programs when the kids' numbers are constantly changing and the parents are waiting to the last second to put their kid in camp. We are we're trying to get away from charging a, a much higher fee if you wait to the last month to put your kid in because we didn't feel it was fair. But it seems like a lot of parents are playing their options off and of where they want to do with their kids in the summer. And the last case is, okay, I'll take you over here. And that throws us for a loop sometimes when we have to try to put summer camp together. So if you can and you think you will be sending your kid to summer camp here in town, please reach out to Recreation Now, get the forms, fill them out. It will be a little cheaper if you do it now than if you wait a month or two from now. So you do have that savings. But it also helps you get better quality counselors because we don't have to start looking for counselors in the last minute to make up for the group of kids that come in so late. Uh, Councilman Bennett. Jack and Evan. Jack and Evan. <laughs> Jack and Evan. Whichever one wants to call. Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, like Councilman Gawain said, I did attend the flood advisory uh, board uh, meeting, uh, which was wonderful. Uh, and sometimes you don't get to see them a lot of times, other boards. Uh, and I, it was my honor to be there, and it was really great to see everybody. And some of the things that came from that meeting, uh, which was great, I, I actually, actually happened to be there. Uh, so some of the things that came from it, they are going to have a rain barrel uh, seminar on April 28th. It's on Saturday at 10 a.m. at Hirschfield Park. As of now, the seminar is full as far as people making the barrels, but anybody can still attend. And if they wanted to make a barrel after the seminar, they still can. What happens is they'll deliver it free to you if you wanted to do it on your own. They'll deliver a barrel to you. So if you go to the seminar, so I, I really want to make my own, they'll deliver a barrel for you. And for approximately $30, you can get the material to actually make your own barrel. So if you, you're interested in it, still go. Even though it's full, you're not going to have a barrel there. Still go to the seminar. Watch how it's done. They'll advise you. They'll give you the website, everything. You buy the, uh, the, the kit for $30, and they'll deliver a barrel free of charge. All right, you can make your own rain barrel. So I thought that was pretty good. I wanted to bring that out to everybody's attention. Also, they also started, uh, it's actually uh, Joe Cristiano that started it. Uh, it's only back in 2011. It's a climate tracking. And it was talked about in tonight's seminar. So they only went back to 2011. But it was just interesting that these first three months of this year, 2018, uh, there's been 18 inches. And that's between all the snow that's melted, actually, uh, ex-wife Lauren Bennett actually collects the snow and melts it to come up with the inches that it would turn into. Uh, so they have 18 inches of rain that has fallen so far of total between the, the snow and the rain for these first three months. So these first three months have been the wettest on record since 2011. Wow. Well, I thought that was pretty interesting uh, that they've been keeping track of that. Uh, also with the, uh, what are some of the other things? The other thing, too, was mentioned here uh, during the seminar. Uh, I think some of the mayor brought it up. There's been spent $740,000 all right, since 2011 that we have spent on our local rivers, de-snagging, de uh, uh clean up the shoals, getting debris out. And that, of course, is through us, Riverdale, and McQuanic, and all the rivers. So I think that's pretty amazing we've done that. And I, and I think it's had an impact. I think it's definitely helped. Uh, and I know they're going out with the drone they were talking about at the meeting, which is unbelievable. We're going to have a drone and really uh, gauge everything from that this year and come up with a plan. So again, they're very active and it was uh, an honor. It was really good to go to that meeting to see everybody and uh, I had no problem. Anytime you need me, I'll be more than happy to go. Uh, and I told them, you'll be back. I know they wanted me, but I still listen. I, I don't want to take it from America. It's the kind of guy. You know, so. <laughs> anyway, I did attend the uh, Easter egg hunt. My councilman the line said, I brought home the uh, candy that was left over, but it was for the children. <laughs> I swear, it was for the children, all right? So, but it was a great time. Uh, all the volunteers, uh, like the mayor said, the Zonta Club, I know my daughter was a part of it, my son is too. Uh, they came and they put out all the candy, and, and it had to be well over 500 children that day. I mean, it was great to see everybody, and uh, the Easter Bunny was there. We got some pictures for the Easter Bunny. So it was a good event, and then thank you to the... Well, again, all the volunteers at Pompano Lake Recreation Commission, uh, and, and it was a great day. Uh, also, with the CTL Day, wanted to thank uh, Liz, always does a hard job on everybody here at Borough Hall putting it together. I know she's not thanked enough, but thank you for everything you do there, uh, organizing the, uh, the lunch over at uh, Tony's Pizza, getting out all there and, you know, serving us and everybody, all the ladies in there. Again, thank you for everything you do as far as that. Uh, and then it was a great day. Uh, met with all the young men and women of the, our future and it was good to see they put on a good presentation uh, and like I said I know the mayor and every, some of the council had questions for him I'm like, and they came back with a great responses and it really was surprising so I told the mayor that I played the mayor if he wanted to fill in what our mayor's done he could do it he's doing a good job I said so uh, again thanks tonight for the uh, seminar to Lauren Bennett Jimmy Rose and Al Evangelista uh, it was a wonderful job putting on tonight considering the uh, it was supposed to be last week but we did it this week. Uh, and that is all I had. I just wanted to, oh, real quick, to uh, point out that, again, what Al talked about, Evangelista, we have 27 miles of roadway in Pompton Lakes for a two-square-mile town. And there's only approximately 18 men and women down to DPW. And considering the, the volume of snow and everything else, listen, I've done it many years. I worked for the town, I worked for the county and the, the parkway. And they did a good job. It was a lot, uh, you know, to, 
storm. But you can look at everywhere what it was. So they did a great job. I want to echo what the mayor and I said. It's not easy. They're coming around and doing a good job. Uh, and again, I appreciate it. I know we have a new superintendent. He's getting a baptism by fire. So, uh, you know, he's really getting at all ends, but he's doing a good job and, and everybody's coming along. So again, thank you to them too down there. Thank you. And, you know, and the, uh, the river work that they, you know, people quietly forget that kind of money that was spent on our river, $750,000, is a hard, large number. And if we didn't spend that money and we didn't do the work of pulling out the trees and the desilting and all that other things, I don't know where we'd be on a lot of these rainstorms, you know. We just talked about 18 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain to have, you know. What, what months do we worry about here in Pompton Lakes? It's March and April. Yeah. Okay, and those are the months coming up. Yeah. So, you know, everything that we can do to help with that is, is, is going to help. I know a lot of people don't see it, but at the end of the day, I feel, just like I think Councilman Jack and said, it does make a difference on the nuisance floods. You know, the large floods, when they come, they're going to come. And no matter what we do, that's not going to stop it. But I, I do think that the work they're doing there does make a difference. Okay, Councilman Bennett. Uh, my turn. All right, so about the drone that uh, Councilman Jackanetta mentioned. Uh, so every year, or actually every two years, um, every two years the Flood Advisory Board physically walks the rivers, the, the sections that they can get to safely, and identify the shoals, the uh, areas that need the silting and the snagging of uh, debris dams, which is like trees that fall in the river which cause uh, things to back up, and then when the water comes, well, you know, when the rain comes, and there's nowhere for the water to go, and it backs up to our neighborhood. Um, so what what has been proposed is to fly a drone down through our river system and map it that way. That way, we get a complete picture, and we can just um, rather the flood board can um, identify the areas and map it properly. Um, with that, I, the OEM uh, Emergency Seminar, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Al Evangelista for putting it together, uh, CERT team, Jimmy Rose for his presentation, of course, uh, my wife, Lauren Venon, who has been mentioned many times tonight, but uh, the, the flood board does do a lot of work. I, she's gone for hours on end every uh, once a month. And Look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But she is the reason I am up here. I'll, I'll mention that again. Um, and the one thing that Al did mention was uh, during the water main break, folks didn't have water to use. And it's a good rule of thumb to have one gallon of water per person per day for, I believe, three days is the uh, general rule of thumb. And so that means for a family of four, which is my family, I have 12 gallons of water sitting in the, in the garage. Uh, when I purchase at BJ's, it's usually little cases that come six in a, six in a case. I buy two cases. I mark the date that I buy them so I know to rotate them out. So that's my addition, like Councilwoman uh, Riker mentioned her her, her tip. Um, I also attended the Lennon School PTA, even though, uh, Tricky Trey, even though my kids go to Lincoln. It was, it was a great time. They did a fantastic job. They, these folks put, put on quite a, uh, quite a, uh, an evening. A lot of uh, prizes were donated. It took like three hours just to get through the I, can, I lost track of how many how many prizes there were, but it was it was a great time. I highly recommend if you missed it this year, check it out next year. Um, I'd like to thank the folks from the Butler Museum. I am the Historic uh, Commission liaison, and they attended last night's me uh, meeting, uh, indicating that they would be here tonight to um, help us get the ball rolling if if uh, when, if and when we're ready. There's an article. A uh, recent article written about how we have a, a lot of history that's currently stored and not on display, and one of the challenges is finding a place to display it. But also, the other half of that is to find staffing for the museum. And the idea of a historical society comes up every so often. Um, it could be volunteers, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, you know, seniors, and anybody could could be involved. But just basically be able to st help staff that museum when eventually it comes to fruition. Uh, and lastly, uh, CTO Day. I'd like to thank all, everybody who helped make, put that together. Um, it, it's, I look forward to it each year. It's my second year since I've uh, gotten on council. Um, uh, my counterpart, Julia uh, Goodwin, and her peers did a fantastic job. They were eloquent. They, uh, the, the gentleman that was the mayor um, had quick answers, ready, and they are pretty good answers, too, considering not much any time to prepare for it. So I'd like to thank those folks. That's my report. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one thing here from the VFW, just to remind everybody, we are cordially invited to the uh, Pompton Lakes Memorial Day uh, Parade, sponsored by the 
uh, John Han, Tri-County Veterans of Foreign Wars, post-2906, and, and the Borough of Pompton Lakes. This year's parade will be held on Sunday, May 27th, 2018. The parade will start at 1045 at the intersection of Lakeside and Jefferson Avenue. Uh, VFW services will be held at 1130 at the Memorial Park. The parade will then uh, uh, follow down the street and will end at the VFW where there will be uh, free uh, hot dogs and uh, sodas. So again, the date is Sunday, May 27th. Okay, professional reports. Uh, my report is, is like a nightmare. I read the copy I emailed over last week. Uh, you have a copy of Al Evangelista's preliminary storm damage assessment um, after the large storm we had uh, earlier in the month, um, which does not include um, any overtime costs. And uh, as it was, um, the estimate at this that point in time is $78,000 and we're still getting the cost of more put the department over time. And we haven't heard anything if they're going to, we haven't heard anything if, been, if we can put that in yet, right? Well, you forget the answer, you get this, that's updated. But the bottom line is going to be is that um, even though the governor declared a state of emergency, there's not been a presidential declaration. Right. And that only comes based upon the state of New Jersey hitting a threshold, but maybe certain counties hitting a threshold. So when we're all said and done, these are all compiled by the state county. If there's nothing enough threshold, there's no, there'll be no request for presidential reimbursement. So okay. I believe this is how the process begins. Okay. And, and, and so we just have to add, and I haven't seen anyone yet, we ask out in the overtime to provide that to the, to the county. Um, Marlene Smith, who's our uh, secretary in the building department, uh, is retiring on uh, April 1st. We're aware of that, but just her, her um, formal letter is, is included in the packet. Um, we received um, letters of support from Council for Real Eisen and Council for Pastorel on these systems of firefighters' grants. As, as the audience are local representative, the Council for Pastorel, who do represent at one time, it is on a committee that actually oversees these grant funds. And so uh, we we'll are very asking to, uh, to to throw a letter in on our behalf. And um, that's really all I have. Any questions from the minister? Nope. Uh, where are we with the uh, our paving projects? Are anything starting soon, or not to do a capital ordinance? No, no. So. We're gonna do cap. We gotta wait for uh, the paving project. Probably won't start until I figure probably June, July, because we have to get the budget adopted, do the capital ordinances, and then we'll go out to bid. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a while. Okay, so we've got some time on that. Okay, any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. We have a motion to open the meeting for public comments. So, so Councilman Galani, Councilman Branco, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Mike Simone, 25 West Sunday Avenue. Uh, just a couple of general observations. After everything that just went on tonight between the OEM presentation and all of the discussions that you all had, it, this is Pompton Lakes. I mean, this is why we have a good town. Sometimes this is the stuff that needs to get out there, and I really wish we would get coverage on the things that are going so well, instead of, as you mentioned earlier, Mayor, the fact that, you know, the record happened to pick the, uh, the DuPont uh, issue and then came up with all of these analyses and whatnot that basically was a hit, was a hit job. So I, I don't know how we change that. I don't know how we get the coverage that we should get. I, I would really like to see somebody actually come up here and say, look, these guys are doing a good job. You know, the town is working well. The, you know, emergency services work well. Uh, the Easter egg hunt, I mean, you know, that, that's a thing that, yeah, you see the pictures on Facebook, but it would be nice to get local coverage. And the trend seems to have, I don't know, largely disappeared. I don't get it anymore. I don't get the record anymore, but I don't see the coverage. I really don't. And I, I would hope that there's a way we can get that back. Um, well, just to follow up on that, I will tell you that I'm guessing the record is having their issues, too, because now if anybody reads the record online, you only get a certain amount of days you can read it online, and then after that they cut you off and don't let you read it anymore. Right. So they must be having their own issues over there at the record because, you know, again, it's, if, if you were going to read it online, now you can. So that's just another means of not being able to get stories out there. Yeah, I, I just I just wish, you know, there was a way to get the messages out there. It's almost like a town newsletter that goes to the area and not just to the town would be helpful because it, it's a shame that the negative is, negativism that you see out there all comes from one thing. That's it. And, and But it's the one that sticks. And um, 
I had actually gone over to the Wegmans in um, I don't know, uh, Mont Montville, whatever. 287? Yeah, 287. Hanover. 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 And, and one, of the, one of the guys works there. He had seen my, my prompted fire shirt on. And he says, uh, oh, you guys have a uh, contamination model. And it was like, <laughs> hello, you know, we have a great town. I just wish there was a way we could get our, our positive side covered. So I don't know how to do that. I'm just saying for all that went on tonight and all that you all spoke about in the OEM presentation earlier, all was top notch. I agree. And so uh, the other thing is, uh, for Frank, uh, I know you were really hoping to have a lot of snow for the Easter egg hunt, because wasn't it your idea to have white eggs, uncolored <laughs> eggs? <laughs> exactly. This is what he could get them when they were done. I, I know you. I know you. Uh, and anyway, I, I wish you all uh, a happy Easter and a happy Passover, and um, wish everybody has a, a positive spring. Please, soon. Likewise. <laughs> oh, you too. Thank you. Anyone else in the public like to address? Uh, Peter Shazan, 314 Woodlawn Avenue. Uh, just wanted to ask uh, Councilman uh, Recky, do you have a um, Councilman Recky, do you have a, a timeline as to when the late cleanup is supposed to be done? I, I'm sure it's been out there. I just don't well, know. I, I spoke to Dave Epps this, this, morning, this afternoon, and he indicated that he felt that, assuming they it away, <laughs> um, that the equipment that you see in the lake now will be there probably through at the end of the year, close to the end of the year. It will remain there? Well, it's moving. Oh, okay. It, it, the equipment you see... Uh, migrating. Will be migrating further down towards the dam. As, as, but oh. not, not the plant. The plant is still there. The, the plant is the plant basically will, this, this... The plant will be done. The plant the is plant done is, now. Oh, you, okay. The plant is all... is The disassembly of the plant is just about finished. So the cleanup is... The, the, well, like how, what okay. percentage wise, how, how far okay. through are we? The cleanup is primarily done. Okay. The two things, the two major things that are left are the um, depositing of the eco layer, mm -hmm. and that's the equipment you see in the lake now. Okay. And then the rebuilding the shore. Okay. Okay, so those are the two main projects that are left. That's right. So right now the, the plant is done, the, the setup on the, on the code. It's coming down. All that equipment is being removed. What's left is putting down the eco layer, which they'll still need a barge for and still need some area to, to do that in. Once they put the eco layer down, which goes on the bottom of the lake, then that all that equipment will be removed. Then they have to restore the cove back to the provision as it was when it started, okay. and hopefully even better than it was. Uh, so there's still plans out there floating around, not to the extent that I'd like to see. I'd like to see more exactly, this is what I'm putting, this is what bush, this is what tree. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to see that, and that's not out there completely yet. Once they do all of that, then the project would be completely done. Great. Hoping, they're hoping for that to be done by end of fall with everything. Mm -hmm. hope, hope. This Great. year. This year. This year. Well, thank you. That, that's good news. And uh, I, I'd also like to attest to the uh, the, the effects of the river desilting and desnagging because I live in the flood zone and I can tell from my own backyard how quickly the water drains. And it's been I, I, it's really been excellent to be honest. Um, and I would definitely attest to the fact that we haven't flooded since 2012 because of that. Right. Again, you can't stop an Irene, but you can stop the spring. I so. agree with you 100%. And that's good to hear from somebody who's there, so that's good. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the phone? Uh, Randy Hinton, 443 Montclair Ave. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't make the beginning of the meeting. I missed a lot. I missed the OEM. Um, but the granddaughter, Junior National Honor Society. Very nice. So, Family's more important. I agree. So we had to be there. But I made it back. Um, We're glad you made it back. <laughs> you missed Al, it, didn't you? Al, 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 spoke, Al spoke very highly of <laughs> the Shade Tree Commission. Well, thank you. I mean, and, yeah. and the Shade Tree Commission has been trying to do all we can. And uh, we're just a few of the many volunteers that do a fine job for this town. Yeah. And to Mr. Simone's point, yes, there's a lot of great things in town. And this is a real good town. I've been here since 1957 as a little kid. And uh, I love this town. And the council, I have to give a lot of credit for. Um, things that they've done for Shade Tree, 
and, uh, and helped us out, increased our budget a little bit, and, uh, and we're trying to do our best to. But in respect to the trends in the record, the town does have a problem. No question. And it shouldn't be swept under the rug. Not everything in the trends in the record, everybody agreed with. But you don't sweep it under the rug. I don't think I still. Are you saying someone saying sweep it under the rug? No, but I'm just saying, it does it give the town a bad look? Yes, it does. But let's not ignore it. It is there. I agree. You know, I and, and we're not ignoring it. The council's not ignoring it. Dupont's working on it. Um, could they do more? Well, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, and uh, you know we hope that they're doing the best they can. Um, but uh, as far as the trend, it's not the paper it used to be. Of course, it was dollar for just a couple of sheets. But uh, I still buy it. And the record, I've never bought, but I read it occasionally when I come across it. going to have problems reading it online now. Wow, well, yeah, there you go. Off public library, right? Oh, yeah, there you go. Go to a library. And we could do it there. I'm assuming they get the daily paper. They do. They do. A lot of people go to the library and they do sit there and read the paper. You know, but um, it is a fact of our town. The DuPont situation, and uh, we're all trying to see that it gets cleaned up the best it can. Um, but I would not stop buying the paper just because of one article. There's a lot of good articles in the agree. trends, and a lot of good articles in the record. I don't agree. If you're going to talk about my town in a five-part project, mm -hmm. then they need to get their facts straight. They need to talk to the DEP. They need to talk to the EPA. These are two groups you can call them themselves. They but did not speak to them. And Mr. Mayor, I agree with you. And they should have came and talked to you also. I'm not even yeah. going to throw my name in that. Talk to the DEP but, and the EPA. And I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, as far as the light cleanup, I talked to Mr. Epps also. And uh, we're talking about the planting plan Good. when they replant that. the trees and stuff. So uh, we we'll hope to see that completed. This year would be nice. And I think some guidance from Fraud and from the Shade Tree about what would be the best thing to put there. You know, I, we don't know that. I, I would hope you guys would know that better. So, and I don't know if they know that. So, you know, whatever we can work out to make things the best we can down there, I would like. As far as the planting around the lake and Dave Epps, he's, I've met with him a few times. He's given me the planting plan for it. I've run it by John Linson, who is our okay, uh, New Jersey certified tree expert, our arborist for the town. He's made suggestions. I further them on to uh, to Dave Epps, and, uh, and hopefully we can make it as Thank nice you. or nicer than it ever was. Good. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. Um, that's all. Thanks very much. Seeing Mr. Hinton. Have a good Easter. You too. Yeah, you, you too. too. Seeing Mr. Hinton, he reminded me of something before I get to my next one. Uh, we have a new person doing our addling of the eggs, uh, Kevin McGrath. Uh, we are a team, myself, uh, Mr. Hinton, and Mr. McGrath, we do one area. We will be uh, going out very soon to start looking for nesting pairs of geese. If you know of nesting gears of, of pairs of geese on property or your own property, please let somebody in that uh, department know. If you would allow us to go on there and addle the eggs, we would. It does reduce the number of geese in our town. Uh, on private property, of course, we can't just go on a private property, so we'd have to have the okay from someone to do that. Right now, we will be out scoping areas to see where the geese are kind of nesting. They're kind of pairing together right now. Next week or two or three, they'll be starting to lay the eggs, and uh, that's when it gets into full swing. I, I Maybe Mr. Hinton remembers. I don't remember the actual number of, uh, of eggs we've added, but it's probably over six or 700 in the last wow. five, five years. Uh, so yeah. it does, you know, think about that. If each, each goose or geese or cows, whatever you want to call it, had five uh, eggs itself, that's a huge number of, uh, of uh, animals that are not here. Yeah. So I feel the program works. Um, it's another group of volunteers that really goes out there unnoticed and does what they have to do. So I'm going to thank them personally now. Okay, anybody hey, else? Can you, can you elaborate on the word paddle? Well, we had to take, everyone has to be educated and take a class. And what happens is uh, most people don't realize when you step on, a, on an egg of a goose, they'll just lay another egg. They have to feel that the egg is there when they're sitting on it. Um, and that way, if you add it in, in oil and you do it through a floating, there's a whole bunch of steps you have to do, but you put it in oil, the egg dies, but they think the egg is still alive. Mm. And then when the, the uh, geese are not born, they just move on. Uh, if you just go remove the eggs, like if a fox goes in there and eats the eggs, they'll just lay five more eggs. You know, when we found nests of between four and six to eight eggs each time we go out. And so it's a trick. 
It's a trick and it's a little a little danger involved. No, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> they, they fight hard. You know that's your middle name. They fight hard. They don't fight. They, they, they don't fight. A guy they, like you, what are you afraid? <laughs> they, they've ruined many an umbrella on me. I'll tell you that. And, you know what happens? Just so it, you you bring an umbrella and the the female sits on the nest, but the male is usually very close. And when it sees you going there, the female comes down like a dive bomber out of the air and will go after you. And it doesn't have teeth, but it has a claw and it's a hook on the back of the leg that can actually grab you. So you put up these umbrellas and kind of push them back and back them off. Wow. And sometimes there'll be two or three males that'll come and get. That's when I send Randy out. Randy, the shot. Let Randy get the He's tall. He's tall. Right. Uh, but you know, and these are in areas that are not the open areas. They're sometimes in the middle of the woods on the, on the wow. end of the riverbank. So you know, it can get a little hairy sometimes. Wow. Um, anyone else from the public like to address? Seeing no one, I have a motion to close the public session. So moved. Councilman DeLine, Council President Riker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Approved to the floor. Anybody approved to the floor? Um, I just want to bring up one thing, actually, um, just for the, the council's notification. Um, you know, we do have the new apps website up and running. Um, there's new people involved in the committees. So I'm actually going to be looking at the check with Liz, but I'm looking to uh, do a uh, refresher training session, a training session for new um, committee members on, I think, Wednesday, April 18th, which I don't think is a council meeting day. Um, it is? It is not. It is not. So I'm, I'm looking to do that. Um, please let your committees know um, that I'm looking, I'm planning on. I'm not sure this is Okay, I'll have to, that's what I need to check on. Um, if it's not available the 18th, then we'll, I'll circle back with everyone. Uh, yeah, well, I think it'll just be better. And what I'm going to ask is, and this is for either you or Eric or both of you, uh, make sure everyone's trained on how to turn the monitors on and off and use them if there is any training involved in that at all. Well, let's start from the basics that most people don't know how to turn a computer sure. on. Let's start from that and then move forward. So I'm, I have to make sure the court understands it, you know, because they have to use it for right. professional reasons. That has to, they have to make sure it's working. So make, we have to make sure they have that down. Yeah, maybe we should have like some kind of posted direction. Yes, that would be helpful. A reference. That would be helpful. Yeah. Right. Any other questions for you? Uh, yes. One thing I have is uh, next council meeting on April 11th. Yes. I will not be here. Uh, but I know you're going to be voting on the budget, and I just wanted to throw my support for the budget and thank everybody for the hard work Kevin putting it together, and uh, I think it will be pleased okay, with our good. portion of it. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank good. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just like to wish everyone a happy Easter and Passover, and uh, it's really a good time for everyone to get together with family and friends. Nice you had to throw that in after I said out on the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wish everybody a happy holiday, too. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Okay, motion to adjourn to close session. Second. Councilman Barranco, Councilman Jack and I. Thank you, everyone, for coming. No, it's, it's, good. it's good? Yes. In closed session, we discussed the negotiation on contract. Thank you. Now we're done. Uh, make a motion. Second. 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 Second.